Okay, this is getting crazy. We're on to number three. Who are they? Part three. So, you know, when people talk about these stories and you track all your conspiracy theories and you follow the, the link, you go to your uh, social media link and it goes from here to there to there to there and it makes you think, oh, yeah, I'm so glad he's almost going to go to prison. It's about time we take that guy down. Oh, it's about time he got elected. Oh, this guy over here, we got to get this guy elected. That means we have to take this guy down. Well, it's getting really scary. There's a war over here. That's really, really bad. We need to stop. And then you realize, oh, wait a minute. There's there's a reason it's happening. But oh, so you do your own research, D-Y-O-R. And the dig, deeper you dig, the more you realize this is insanity. It's all planned out. WW3 has been simmering in the background for, I would say, a couple of decades now. And it's now reaching this point, you know, like a souffle, where it's going to go very pretty. And it all depends on what side of the, say, the, uh, the battlefield you reside. Where do you where do your principles lie? What are your belief systems? Who are your allies? Who are your enemies? And in my world, I'm noticing that people are talking about how I, I've lost a friend because their belief systems are so alien to mine, and I only just figured it out. They only just figured it out. We can't even connect anymore. We can't talk anymore. Hardcore lefties over here, well, oh, they can't hang out with hardcore. Uh, right wingers over here it's not possible i know i can do it i have a few friends and family where i'm it, it's fine i know where they stand i think they know where i stand but we don't let that get in the way of the uh of this okay so anyway here we are uh, who are they little video uh, number three so if you watch some of the sources that I follow and you dig deep enough, they always come to this question like, well, okay, so there's this battle over here. There's the stuff over in uh, Eastern Mediterranean and Eastern Europe and over near uh, the South China Sea. It's all getting really, really bad. Uh, enemies have been fighting each other for 3,000 years in a blood feud. What's going on with that one over there? And then there's the whole border uh, between Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and the so-called bad guys in Russia. And then there's the border. Well, it's not really a border, but there's the, the world of CHINA, which is basically owned and operated as a massive criminal operation uh, by the C. C, B, and each one of these things are it's these storylines. But basically, if you are an observer, you'll notice that there are three massive. Let's see if I can do that. Three massive front lines developing across the world. And I think the real bomb dropped in January 2020 when we had this massive convergence of planets that we hadn't seen in thousands of years. We had Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter all aligned at the, I think it was the 20, 20, 22nd, 20, anyway, it was the late degrees in the 20s. And it spelled like global, globalized slow motion implosion chaos, which we're seeing today, you know, three years later, actually it's getting on for four, January, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24, almost four years later, the shock waves are still rippling outwards. And those shock waves are triggering the next layers of uh, fragility, which is the Pluto Aquarius threshold where we are right now, which happens to coincide very closely with the United States threshold, 27 and a half degrees Pluto from the massive Pluto return. So if you want to think of a Pluto return as the journey of empires, you can watch 
Ray Dalio on this subject or Mark Moss on this subject. Think of it as a 250 year cycle, okay? Uh, I like the way they broke it down into 61 year chunks at the very birth. Hard times breed strong men. Then you go up to the 61 year mark. Strong men breed good times. They go up to the 180 degree mark. Good times breed weak men. You're now at the 180 degree mark. So I said 280. No, wait a minute. I can't do it. Is it 270 degree? I can't remember. Anyways, three quarters of the way around the circle of evolution. And weak men breed bad times. So right now, this is the last 61 year cycle. So most of the people watching this show and this channel have only been alive in this last quarter of the Pluto journey. And I'm one of those people. So we are seeing, I would feel I was lucky because I had a sniff of the really, really good times. I feel like I was so lucky as a child. I feel like I had so much, a very lucky boy, a very wealthy boy, a very happy boy, a very blessed boy. Even I, though I had some horrific things going on, which, you know, you could write books about it now. But anyway, good times breed weak men. And we're at the very, very last stage of the 61-year segment of that, that journey. And we are seeing the weakest of the weakest, which are the, uh, the, the four main entities that I feel have ultimately betrayed America. And that betrayal permeates across the world because it has an impact. American has been a very dominant influence on the world, for better or worse, for the last 250 years. And some people don't like it anymore. So there's a massive global restructuring and a fracturing where um, so a lot of people don't want to live under the hegemony of the United States empire. So people are splitting off and it's it looks like war. Anyway, so who are they? Who benefits? That's the question that these deep divers ask on the sources that I go to. Ultimately, the reporter and the newscaster and the, the journalist, the investigative journalist ultimately goes, well, who benefits from all this dirt, blood, mayhem, and slaughter? And you go, hmm, well, follow the money. And then you just start to discover that there's illegal arms trading, like tons of money goes to this country, uh, and then that country says, oh, thank you very much. And then they start selling it off to another country, nothing to do with the original deal. And that other country happens to be the enemy of the original country. So it perpetuates war, weapons flying all over the place that have no business being in certain countries with certain leaders. And it just leads to chaos and mayhem. But at the very core of it, you follow the money. And in the United States, the money is all about the MIC, the military industrial complex. Big, big, big money, big, big, big business, all deeply connected through the Appropriations Committee, buried deep in Washington, D.C., which is very, of course, integrated with the United States Treasury, which is, of course, deeply integrated with the United States Federal Reserve Banking System. So it's all about the money, honey. And who benefits? The MIC. So who and what is the MIC? Who are they? So I've got a little short list. I'll just go through it quickly and then we'll be on our way. Okay. I just want to identify the big one. There's lots of them, uh, but they are, I'm going to point out the big ones that I, that I've learned about. So let's go over here. We're going to start with, let's have a look who have we got uh, first off. Okay. General Motors defense. So did you know that General Motors had a defense section? Look at this stuff here. There you go. That's uh, integrated vehicles. Oh, infantry squad vehicles. Uh, Two-seater, four-seater, heavy gun carriers, electro, heavy, heavy duty, light duty, common tactical trucks, and so on. Uh, let's have a look. Can you um, videos? Anyway, you say, so you see what I'm talking about over here. I, I've lost the... Bah, I've lost it. Anyway, so that's what it kind of looks like. There's General Motors military extension, okay? 
all these things. I couldn't find anything much about, well, anyway, I'll show you what I've been finding. So the pictures are doing all the talking for me, so I don't have to do a lot of talking here. Let's have a look at the next one over here. Raytheon, it's an RTX business. Okay, who we, who we are, and here's what we do. Let's have a look. Air, land, sea, outer space, cyber, integrated air and missile defense, strategic missile defense, advanced technology. God knows what that would be. Maybe that's EMPs, hypersonics. Those are the like the super ultra hyper fast missiles. Anyway, so let's have a look. Air. <laughs> okay, it takes a lot of built money to build one of these, build some of these, make a bunch 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 of these. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so there's an example. That's uh, that was air. Let's have a look at land while we're here. Why not? Clickety click. Hmm. What does that look like? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, look at that. One of those tanks, maybe? Excaliburs, javelins, TOWs. I don't know what they are. Sensors. Oh, wait, is I don't know what that is, but it obviously very dangerous. Let's have a look. Uh, C. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. What is that? <laughs> More sensors. Submarines. Airborne mine neutralization systems. Advanced strike weapons. Yow. These look very nasty. Very dangerous. Torpedoes. Missiles. Weapons, my God, billion, trillions of dollars. Phalanx weapon system, look at that. Command and control. Destroyers, look at that beast. The Aegis, look at that. Electronic warfare. Anyway, so there's, uh, what have we covered so far? Air, land, sea, let's have a look at space while we're here. Whoa. Look at that. Oh my God. Ground control. Look at that. The best weather. Constellation management. I didn't know you could manage the constellations. Earth observing system data information systems. GPS satellites. Polar satellites. What's it like to watch a rocket launch in person? Wow. Wow. Earth observation, you know, snooping, spying, and more. Let's keep going. This is fascinating stuff. Cyber. That's probably like computers and things. Dun, da, da, da. That's where you should be really scared. Who we are, what we do, how we do it. Of course, they're not going to tell us. Mm, hackers, cyber hackers. It takes a hacker to hack a hacker. Did you know that? There we go. Let's have a look. Integrated air and missile defense. Sorry, I'm this this is just like an orgy of. Look at that thing. Is that an EMP gun or something? Look at that thing. Look at the size of it. This is the lower tier stuff. Oh, Patriot missiles, the sling system, medium range. Wow. Nasty. Short range again. Counter UAS, whatever that is. Look at these things. Yow. I'm just going to keep scrolling. Strategic missile. Oh, my. So, okay, that looks bad. That looks really, really bad. They probably so bad you can't even fit them on the screen. Okay, so that, you can see all that's pretty scary stuff. Oh, advanced. What is that? <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, this is beyond my comprehension. Hypersonics, microwaves, 
lasers. Okay, that's that's obviously you know borderline EMPs, and then hypersonics. We already did that, didn't we? Didn't we just talk about that one? Look at that. Okay, you know the Chinese are, have have made some of these. Of course, they're copycats of these, and most of the I think is just uh, digital animation. But anyway, there you go. So I think that's who we are. There they are. Happy people doing happy, cool things. Okay, let's have a look. Moving on. Boeing. Look, there's... Now, Boeing is huge. And there's the commercial section, which is fine. You know, you go on vacation to Europe or something. But look at this. There's defense. <laughs> Outer space. Innovation. I mean, this is scary stuff, people. Well, it's actually very beautiful and amazing. Let's have a look at defense. Can you see these pictures close up? Like the AH light helicopters. There's the Apache. There's Air Force One. Missile defense. Autonomous. It goes. It's alphabetical, I guess. Damn it, I missed the uh, pictures. There's the Globemaster spy jet. There's the B-52. My God. There's the Chinook. And there's the Growler, the F-15, F-18, the MQ-25, P-8 Phantom. Ooh, that's scary stuff. And uh, it doesn't show the F-35. Hmm, why doesn't it show the F-35 here? Let's have a look at space. Because maybe it's in outer space. Satellites, Artemis system. Commercial satellites, space satellites for war services, mm, government. Mm -hmm, yes, let's keep going. Now, this is another really big name. Huge, huge military industrial complex participant, but they actually merged with Boeing. But people still use the name a lot, so I thought I would add that. Next, we have over here Lockheed Martin. Oh, no, it looks very similar, doesn't it? Who we are, what we do. So, oh, look, there it is. There's the F-35. Hmm. What will define the next generation? Well, I think what will define the next generation is whether you're dead or maybe you're alive. Hmm. Hmm. Ahead and ready. Always ahead of ready. Okay. Aircraft carriers. Why not? Land, sea, air. Same stuff as Northrop Grumman, what we do. The website's probably made by the same people. Look at that, aircraft. Wow. Fighter jets, tanker jets. Look at all that stuff. Rotary wings. Wow, man. You know, we're, we're talking trillions, trillions of dollars. Maritime systems. Uh, all domain operations, outer space. Let's go to outer space just for fun. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah, outer space. Next-gen capabilities. Oh, let me go back over here. I just want to look at... Um, no, wait a minute. Where's the maritime systems? Very curious about that. Maritime systems. There it is. There's your typical backyard aircraft carrier. Everyone's got to have one of those in your backyard. How are you going to manage otherwise? Oh, look. Surface combat, directed energy. Ah, we know what that is. That's lasers shooting you out of the sky. Hypersonics. Look, look at those attack helicopters. Well, that's an F-35. Anyway, so there you go. Let's scroll down here. And um, there's one more that I'm going to show you. It's these folks over here, General Motors. You know, you're probably thinking of your Chevy, your Chevy Tahoe, your Chevy trucks or whatever, but guess what? They have a whole defense system, integrated vehicles, infantry squad vehicles, two-seater, four-seater, heavy, did I do this one already? Heavy duty, SUVs, light duty, tactical, common tactical trucks. Let's have a look. Uh, I, you know, they got a look, whoa. Jeepers, there's your typical common tactical truck. You've got to have one of those. I mean, who doesn't have one of those? You know? Again, you should keep one in your backyard just in case. 
So there we are. Oh, look, power and propulsion. I want to look at that. Let's have a look. Uh, maybe we're talking about uh, oh, electric something. I'm just clicking. I'm just clicking for curiosity. No, oh, maybe it's like an electric. Oh, forget it. I don't forget it. Uh, abandon that. Uh, uh, let's have a look at that. Heavy duty gun carrier. Let's have a look at that and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. There you go. Blam. Yay. So uh, there we go. That's what it all looks like. So there you go. I just wanted to share with you. That's another. This is video number three. Who are they? That's the military industrial complex. They benefit. Stock prices go up, up and up and up. Investors pour money in. Oh, look, World War Three! This is going to be awesome. This is just so big. We're playing. We don't have to play video games anymore. We can do it for real. Salivating. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. This is my, I'm just offering my opinions through my own research, DYOR, and all of that stuff, okay? So thanks for watching. I'm going to wrap it up and... Let you uh, go on your way. Stop the recording. Bye-bye.